Paul, Barnabas, Apollo, Luke, Timothy, gnarly, gnarly dudes. These guys were tough. They never really took the easy road. They were going up and down mountains. Paul likened his journey of faith to an athlete. He says, I buffet my body. He said, I fight the good fight. I finish the race. There's a great uh, amount of things we can learn from understanding sports and the intersection of sports and faith to see how what we can learn out of sports because it's something I think God takes great delight in, something humans take great delight in, and we can discover a little bit more about our faith journey by understanding the intersection of sports and faith. We have as our guest today, Bruce Warzniak from Catholic Sports Radio. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We believe here at Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. That doesn't mean when you, you know, the whole thing about adventure is that there's some kind of risk involved. You know, when, as a surfer, we go on surfaris. We call them surfaris. Sometimes we find radical out of control waves, like when I was in Chopu in Tahiti with my son, and it was uh, 45 foot faces and eight, an eight to 10 foot thick falling lip onto a shallow roof at Chopu. Surfers know where Tia Hopu'u is. It means the end of the road. Um, my son Jeremiah has dropped into 85-foot surf on the North Shore of Oahu. Last, yet, Just the other day, we were watching a contest in Nazare, Portugal, where someone dropped into a wave and just got wedged as another kind of, the wave kind of bent in on itself. And uh, they, had to, they had to rescue him, bring him, bring him up on the beach and resuscitate him. Um, there's an adventure, though. There's an adventure to being a Christian, and it involves risk. If it didn't involve risk, where would the fun be? That's kind of one of the things I wonder about when I get to heaven uh, and I get to go surfing there is there, what's going to be the element of danger and risk? There's got to be something like that because it's, it's part of that thing that keeps us living on the edge and, and keeps our wits about us. When you're jumping out of an airplane, you're not really thinking about anything else but that. You're not, talking, you're not thinking about politics or your bills. You're totally alive in the moment. When you're playing a lacrosse or a football game or, or basketball or any sort of sports venture, snow, snowboarding, skiing, hang gliding, you are pretty much focused in that moment when there's a, a, a meld of your body, your soul, uh, your mind, your intellect, all of your skills to make those things all come together. And there's kind of a unity then in your mind and body when you're in that, when you're kind of in the zone, as we say in the sports world. I know when I won, my, won a couple of my world titles in tandem surfing, paddling into a nice big wave, dropping in, knowing the moment to get up with my partner, powering into the bottom term and lifting her over my head in an acrobatic lift, uh, in the zone with my partner, with the wave, uh, my mind and my body all working together as one. That union of mind and body is really important. John Paul II spent a, a, a 135 homilies talking about the theology of the body to really come to grips with what we can learn from our bodies through our intersection of sports and faith is why we have our guest today, Bruce Warzniak, Catholic Sports Radio. He's been a radio announcer for hockey, for lacrosse, for softball, and uh, just loves sports and, uh, and, and loves his Catholic faith. So aloha, Bruce. Welcome to the show. Hi, Bear. Thanks for having me on. Hey, if you guys are watching this, uh, the video version of this is pretty cool because we kept adjusting Bruce's uh, studio a little bit, and now half of his ca face is covered by his by his puff mic, <laughs> which makes you look a lot better, Bruce. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm on the radio. I have that face for radio, as the saying goes. <laughs> oh, that's true. No, that's true. They, you know, that's what people tell me too. So, Bruce, yeah, and it is true. Some people really do have that voice, you know. I'm told that I have that, and I don't really think that I even recognize it. When I listen to myself back on my shows, I just kind of am listening more from a critical standpoint and not from the standpoint of do I have a radio voice or not. We just get used to hearing our own voice. Right. And it takes some outsider to give you that perspective that you say, look, as long as what I'm doing is pleasing to the audience, I don't care what my voice sounds like. At least it's not horrible. You know who has a great voice? Matthew Leonard. 
whenever I talk to him, he's a friend of mine too. Whenever I talk to him, I just call, I just call him the voice. I mean, he's just got this <laughs> perfect, perfect radio voice. But you know what? I'll tell you what. Um, you know, when I was new in my faith, when I was 19 years old, uh, I could I, I I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, gave my life to the Lord, and, but I as far as voice goes, I couldn't carry a tune. I was really really bad. Like when I was in choir, they would tell me, "Don't sing it; just pretend to sing it. Just mouth the words." <laughs> uh, but the Lord healed my voice. About a week after I gave my life to the Lord, I was I was wow. singing a worship song, and my dad was on one side and my mother on the other, and they looked over at me like, "What's going on with him?" And I ended up I actually ended up playing the guitar and leading the worship for uh, the charismatic prayer group. So yeah, so Amazing. the voice, the voice, the voice crying out in the wilderness, John the Baptist, uh, the, the voice of, of radio announcers. It's something that's, uh, it's a very unique calling and a unique gift. It's really cool to be part of it. You know what's cool, Bruce? Being Having your Catholic sports radio show, you get to talk to people who would never otherwise talk to you, right? That's right. And there are people I, that dawned on me recently that there's people that I'm talking to who probably otherwise don't get interviewed as well as people who would otherwise not take my call, not answer my email. <laughs> and it's great. It's that quickly and it's that easily that we could bond with someone because you find something borderline that you have in common. And all of a sudden you say, oh, you're Catholic also. And it's just like, wow, all of a sudden we could be best of friends. Yeah, you know, uh, yesterday we had we received an order from some guy named Mike Shula uh, from our website. Mm. Go, Mike Shula, wow, it couldn't be the same person. And I look at his address, and it's Bronco Par Broncos Parkway. <laughs> so I wrote to him. I said, "Will you be on our radio show?" He goes, "Yeah, I love your show. I listen to it. You know, my drive into the stadium on Saturday nights when they're getting ready for the game." And uh, he would never talk to me, dude, if I if I didn't have a radio show. So <laughs> we're very fortunate people. I have Boss Rootin' on and just all kinds of really cool people. And I'm sure you have too. What, what, are the, what are the people that you've had on your radio show that really jump out to you? Well, I think there's several that come to mind. And there, there are people, like you said, that you wonder, would I ever have a reason? Never mind, would I ever get them to take my call or would I ever get to spend some time in the, I'm having, you're having longer conversations than mine. You know, mine are about 25 minutes long, but I love talking to these people and it's hard to kind of pick out favorites, but you know, Cam Cameron, I talked to him. He was the coach of the Miami dolphins. He spent a lot of time with the chargers, with the Baltimore Ravens. He coached collegiately real, real, real strong in his faith. And someone that said, you know, I want to help you get out to other guys, Bruce. And, and it's like we're talking about bear guys that I won't otherwise be able to talk to. But it's like if Cam Cameron calls and says, you need to do this guy's show, they're going to do my show. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's there's other people, too. Like uh, there's a, a former now I'm, I'm using the right word here. I don't want people to think he meant to say manager, a former major league baseball, major league baseball coach and not a manager, but. He coached in MLB for over 25 years. He was on the staff when the when the then Florida Marlins, not Miami Marlins, when the Florida Marlins won the World Series in 97. His name is Rich Donnelly. And Rich tells an amazing story that a lot of people have probably heard already. So he has great testimony. There's a guy that was a undefeated heavyweight boxer by the name of, he went by Baby Joe Macy. And Baby Joe really talks on the interview that I did with him, you know, about doing exactly what we're talking about Barry. you know, bringing the Lord into the locker room. He would put a scapular in his boots before every match. He would go into his opponent's locker room before a match and pray with that person. And you hear about these stories and it's like, first you can't believe them, but then you say, well, why not? You know, well, why can't you go and pray with your opponent before the well, game? The, the thing about it is, you know, as an athlete too, when I have great opponents, I, I never speak badly about my my competition because the great opponent brings out the greatness in you. You know, you can't you can't live up to your full ability unless there's someone there that's challenging you. You know, to to do that. You know, you know, Boss Rutten, for example. You know, the MMA fighter. He, uh, I, I asked him about his prayer life. He says, "Well, every morning when he's doing his forty minutes of flexibility training in the backyard, he's praying the rosary." Wow. So just simple wow. things like that, you know, the yeah. integrating your faith into your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, and you know the thing is, there's a guy who plays in the NHL right now. I interviewed him 
in April of last year, and he was playing for the New York Rangers at the time. He has since gotten traded, but he was a young guy that <laughs> I got referred to, and I think he kind of misunderstood what the show was all about. I think he just thought it was going to be just another traditional sports interview because, you know, for your for your viewers, for you listeners, we don't talk about wins and losses and statistics. Like I think ESPN has that pretty well covered, <laughs> Fox Sports <laughs> and everyone. So they don't need some guy named Bruce with this big long Polish last name hosting a show that. They're going to go, well, what makes him any different from us? So we're talking about the intersection of faith life and sports life every single episode of my show. And this guy comes on, and I think he was waiting for me to ask him about the New York Rangers or about life in the NHL. And I'm trying to ask him about his faith life. And the one thing that he said that really resonated with me that I've held on to all this time is he said, you know, if we're lucky, if we're lucky, we get to play in the NHL for 10 years, you know, maybe into our 30s but we have our faith with us for our whole life. And so the point was that, yes, sports are great and we should work at it and it's a wonderful career to have and to aspire to, but work at your faith life. Always work at your faith life. Like practice that every day. You practice hockey, you practice whatever your sport is, but stay in good shape with the Lord, with your relationship with him every single day because that's something that you're going to have until the day you die is your relationship with him and your well, faith in him. Yeah, I, I got I had the privilege of taking the Nigerian nightmare uh, um, uh, out surfing the great uh, fullback for the K Christian, Kansas, Okoye. Or, Christian Okoye. Yeah. yeah. So strong, dude. This is after he had retired. He's a Hall of Fame member. And I took him out paddling. I gave him my, my huge tandem surfboard. It's meant for two people. <laughs> he started paddling. He was so strong, he could hardly lift his arms, though, right? Because he just so much muscle to lift when he's paddling in a position he's not used to. But I asked him, how do you stay in such great shape? And he says, it's easy. I have an appointment at the gym every single morning with just myself at, my, at his own home gym. And everyone knows don't bother him at that hour of the day. He has an mm. appointment. And I, and I think it's the same way with us. We have to have an, a spiritual appointment every day to spend our hour with the Lord uh, so we can right. be spiritually fit. But we also need to be physically fit too. You need both spirit and soul and body. You need you need both to be in great fitness. We're talking with Bruce Wozniak. His podcast is the Catholic Sports Radio uh, Show. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, I, I'm fortunate. I, I'm 66 year old, 66 years old. I know I shouldn't be saying that, but my wife and I still go out tandem surfing, and we win most of the events we are in, where we paddle into a wave and I lift her over my head and we compete. Why is that? It's because I've had a commitment in my life to stay physically fit, watching, having an eating regimen, watching what I'm watching what I'm eating, uh, a physical workout regimen, and uh, also. Gosh, I think I, my mom told me to start taking vitamins when I was in college. So more and more, I've been taking supplements. Uh, and I was so fortunate. I was one of the first people sponsored by this great uh, sports uh, supplement company, onit.com. If, if you know the MMA or you know athletes, 
you know on it.com and i just got off the phone with them yesterday uh they used to send me all my supplements for free you know and that why well, i still i still am sponsored by them but i arranged for you guys if you go to on it.com check it out and just when you go to if you find some of the supplements that you want to use when you go to checkout just put in the the code bear at checkout for your coupon and you get a 15 percent 10 to 15 percent discount the one i started out on the first product is called alpha brain that has to do with being mentally alert, sleeping better, having more vivid dreams. Um, I really, I really can't function without taking my my vitamins for my brain, Alpha Brain. So check out onit.com. Hey, we're talking with uh, Catholic Sports Radio uh, host Bruce Wozniak. We must be we must be related somewhere, Bruce, with a, with your name like that. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Yeah, a pair of guys that are both BW. Yeah. Bear Wozniak and Bruce Wozniak. Those sound very close. But what, and what, we're both in, and we're both in Florida today. Are you Ukrainian or Polish or Czech Polish? Or, Polish. Polish. So we're na- we were neighbors. Because I'm Ukrainian. <laughs> hey, so t- tell us a little bit about your faith walk before we start digging a little bit diver- d- deeper into this intersection of sports and faith. Well, you know, I always forget that there's a lot of converts to the Catholic faith, and so I just assume that everybody's like me and that we are all born into the faith, which I was. And so my story is very traditional, being born into the Catholic faith, baptized, getting all the sacraments at the traditional ages, and going through Catholic school that whole time, kindergarten through eighth grade. And then when you graduate from eighth grade, as we called it back then, and you go into, we were, we were right on the line where there was a school transition in that I went on to what was high school, nine through 12. So I only had to go through two schools my whole life. And then nine through 12 was just a public school. But, you know, you just automatically take your faith with you. It's not a case of, well, I'm not going to a Catholic school anymore. So am I still going to go to church? Am I still going to practice my faith? Of course you are. And so I took that with me. And really it's, again, like I was saying before with the hockey player, it's the one constant in your life. And in my life, sports has always been a constant too. So that's, kind of how I came up with Catholic Sports Radio to merge the two. But, you know, your Catholic faith is something that you always have. And so it's something that I've just dedicated my whole life to. And to me, I don't view this as one way that I could serve God. I view it as I'm honored that he would call me to serve the kingdom in this way that I joke, Bear, we were talking before about having the radio voice. I always say that I was blessed with the gift of gab, and I I mean that sincerely, because it's what gives me the ability to use the talents that God gave me and all this equipment that I have to say, well, why not use it to glorify Him? You know, it's interesting, too. So you, you had this personal journey of being raised in the Catholic faith. Do you ever remember a time when you said, like, there is this moment of, okay, I'm selling out to Jesus, or was it just this journey, this gradual up, up, upward journey? There was a moment that I had in September of 2012. I was in Brazil on a business trip. I was on a riverboat on the Amazon River, and... Yeah, this is a business trip. It was a business trip. I never heard anybody tell me they went on a business trip to Brazil and then was on a, on a riverboat on the Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And so... <laughs> Everybody who was there for this same conference was above deck and I'm below deck and I'm just hanging out and I'm wondering, you know, why is everybody up there? What's so different? What's there to see? So I finally decided to venture up there and I'm sitting up there. And at the time I had been talking to someone else about something that we were going to do together that mirrored what I'm doing now with Catholic Sports Radio and was preparing to leave that job that I was in, even though it did send me to places like Brazil And that's when I had that moment that you're asking about Bear. I went up and I said, okay, now I see why everybody is sitting up on this top deck. What a beautiful view. And as I sat there, there were, of course, everything in the Bible comes in threes. So I received three messages as I was sitting there. The first was, Bruce, look all around you. What do you see? And I thought, oh, water. There's so much about water in the Bible that, okay, wow, that's that's a pretty powerful moment. And next thing you know, I get tapped on the shoulder again. And the question now is, Bruce, what is your favorite story in the Bible? And I thought, well, that's the one where Jesus is falling asleep in the boat and the water's getting in and they wake him up and say, please save us. The water's coming in. We're going to drown. And he gets him back to shore and he says, guys, did you have faith? 
So I thought, oh my gosh, this is really powerful that I'm being blessed to be touched with these stories right now and these reminders. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me that if I was going to leave this job to go do something that mirrors what Catholic Sports Radio has become, then the last one was throw down your nets, let's go be fishers of men. And I thought my net was that job that I was in that was sending me to places around the world like Brazil. That was that was the safety net to me, this nine to five job, you know, just like those guys were fishermen and this was their bread and butter. And Jesus is telling them, throw down your nets and believe in me and just follow. And here I'm saying, he's calling me to this for a reason. And so I need to go and follow him. And Bear, the interesting part is that what I left that job to go and do ended up falling apart after a little more than a year. And I was very disappointed. I was very heartbroken, but I never lost that I'm going to say that kind of the pilot light was still on on the stove. And over the years, it dawned on me that I could do that on my own in the form of what is Catholic Sports Radio. So I went a long way to say, yes, I did have a moment where I really went, okay, now now I see. Yeah, it's so interesting that, the, you know, wait a minute, you think God wants to communicate with us? Well, yeah, you know, his son's name is Word. You know, <laughs> God has a God has a, a a beautiful plan for each of our lives, and we call Him Lord all the time. But sometimes He He'll say, "Hey, you know, you call me Lord. You know what that means? <laughs> 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 you know, will you will you follow me? Will you follow me?" But I'll tell you, you know, this is true. The the and people who don't know God, they don't ever get to experience this. There's something about abandoning yourself to His will and being right in the middle of that river, like that big Amazon river, and you get to see God move. You and know, you, you step out in faith, and and you, you see a mountain in front of you, you see a brick wall in front of you, and God just gets a little bit of a good laugh, and he says, no, no wall's any bigger than any small wall. To me, they're all the same. And he moves right. mountains, and he moves walls, and you get to see God touch people's lives. That's right, that's right. In 2004, I was in Athens, Greece for the Summer Olympics, and the coach of the U.S. women's softball team, he had just lost his wife Mm. 10 days before the game started. Uh, Completely unexpected, a brain aneurysm, picture of health one day and gone the next. And what got him through that was his Catholic faith and and so many of the girls being such strong Christians, you know, P.S., they end up winning the gold medal, but I had him on the show because I knew him at the time. And, you know, he told that story that, yeah, it was absolutely, it was absolutely his faith that was able to get him through that. And so I'm like you, Bear, you know, when, when I hear of people that don't have their faith, I think, I don't even know that I can understand what that concept is like, because how do you get through these difficult times? Through your faith. Well, you know what, I'll tell you what, in our social media outreach, <clears throat> we get really tragic messages from people, hateful, hateful message. Hateful towards God, hateful towards Christians, hateful towards Catholics, <laughs> hateful towards me. And uh, it saddens me because I'm thinking, wow, uh, my whole life I've had this upward desire for God. My whole life. Now, all I can remember being raised as a Catholic, you know, was this upward yearning. And how sad that that flame seems to be extinguished in some people's lives. But that's why you and I are doing what we're doing, because one of those people one day is going to hear one thing that the Lord gave to us, right? These are our words that we're saying the Holy Spirit is intervening in our show every time we turn on the microphone. And so there's going to be something that someone hears that says, okay, maybe there's something to this. And it's just that little bit of hope. It's just that maybe that gets them to pursue it a little bit further, to listen to more episodes, to go to church, to look in the Bible, whatever it is. And that's where I say, if God uses me to move one person closer to him, then praise God that I was the one, that I was the vehicle that he chose so that that person would turn closer to him. Yeah, what, what's the only thing that, you know, we, there is something we can take to heaven. People say you can't take anything with you, but there is. You can take other people. And that's it. Our mission is to our mission is to share with people the good news, and it's not like it's a job to us. <laughs> we can't help it, you know. So so thrilled with our with the Lord and His love and His mercy. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're talking with Bruce Wozniak, the host of Catholic Sports Radio. 
We're talking about the intersection of sports and faith. We'll be right back. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I've got a real problem. Uh, my webmaster, my web designers, they go, we can't design a website that can contain all that you're up to. There's so much going on. We have the Bears Man Cave. It's a special secret Facebook group you can only join, by the way, by going to our website uh, where the men get together and we we text and we're, I mean, we're messaging uh, secret on the secret page every day. Uh, and then every few weeks, randomly in the morning, sometimes at night, sometimes on weekdays, we get together and we have a Zoom video chat and we challenge, encourage, and mobilize each other. We have over a thousand videos up on YouTube, anywhere from uh, trailers for our Long Ride Home TV show on EWTN to, you know that every morning at 7 a.m., wherever I happen to be in the world, usually by an ocean, I turn on my Facebook camera and we go live and we do the Ocean Sunrise Catechism. It may be 7 a.m. on the East Coast or it might be 7 a.m. Uh, Hawaiian time or who knows. But we do that every morning. We, we've gone through the entire catechism once and now we're doing it again through Facebook. But you go to our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, all of those, those, we go step by step by step. When you look at the Ocean Sunrise Catechism, it says Ocean Sunrise Catechism pound 245. That means that's the paragraph we're on. So you can go through the entire catechism. The other thing that's cool about it is people make comments on it in YouTube or on Facebook, so there becomes a sense of community and people praying for each other. So there's just so much going on. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, subscribe to our email so we can keep you up to date. We're talking with Bruce Warzniak, host of Catholic Sports Radio, uh, Polish, I'm Ukrainian, Warzniak and Woznik, B the two BWs, uh, meet up to have this conversation about the intersection of sports and faith. So, Bruce, what what is it that we can learn from sports about our faith journey and about life? Well, Bear, before I answer that, I don't want to forget this great testimony that I want to share with yeah. the listeners because, you know, you were saying about the people that don't really feel it, and I say that you need to be looking for it. And mm. I think people look for these huge aha moments like the one that I was blessed to experience in Brazil. But when I first got the idea for Catholic Sports Radio, I thought, well, hold on a minute. I, I'm excited about this, but I need to sit down and make sure that this is going to really be something that I can sustain for a while. So right away, I started making up a list of who are people that are current or former athletes, coaches, referees, umpires, clergy, administrators that are Catholic that I can interview. And I was pretty proud of myself. Because I came up with a list of about 45, 46, 47, 48 people. And I thought, okay, th th this is good. I can do the show. Well, hold on a minute. Can I? Because number one, I have to get a hold of all those people. Number two, they have to say yes. And number three, that means I might be able to get a year out of it. And so here's what happens, folks. So then Satan comes in and tells you, you can't do that. Just abandon the idea because Satan doesn't want us to glorify God in that way. He doesn't want, him, doesn't want us to glorify God in any way. He doesn't want the Lord's name lifted up. So right away, Bear, I kind of start questioning myself and I say, well, maybe I should just do it every other week. You know, maybe I just shouldn't do it as often. And so in that moment, as soon as I started recognizing that I was backing off from it, I recognized that that was the evil one that was moving in and trying to discourage me from doing it. So then I got angry and said, well, now I am going to do it every week. And it's like God said, Bruce, you do the show. I'll get you the guests. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so a year later, my list is now up to what was what was in the high 40s. It's now up to 202 potential guests that are on my list. So only a year. So what I'm telling your listeners, your audience, is that you don't have to look for these big, huge life-changing moments to say that God is moving in what you're doing. And so he can move in your sports life. He can move in something like the shows that you and I do bear, and he can move in our everyday life. And our everyday life, a lot of times, some folks might be just sports fans and say, well, that doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. <laughs> because sometimes there's a temptation to become very unchristian-like as a fan 
and start <laughs> hurling expletives at the screen or you're at a game and you're yelling things out at players, you know, you're hoping that someone gets hurt on the other team. There's a psychologist that I've had on my show twice already to talk about a lot of these types of things. You know, parents that take sports way, way, way too seriously. And there's a lot of different issues, gambling, uh, domestic violence, all these things come into play with sports that you, again, have to evaluate well, this is the same person who is at mass on Sunday morning and now in the afternoon is screaming like a lunatic because their NFL team is losing. So I talked to her twice already on my show because there's just so much that needs to be peeled back on things like that so that we are being consistent in our faith life, whether we're being a sports fan, whether we're at work or whether we're surfing. Well, you mentioned, you know, that this is a this is a walk of faith. Everything that we do should be, you know. But I just love it. Cindy and I will be sitting and have breakfast. We like to go out for breakfast two or three times a week, kind of start out our, our day together that way. And that's just kind of when we talk about what's up, what's, that, what's, the, what, what's our plans and things. And it's just so cool. We're walking along the beach or whatever, and we're talking like that. And we kind of come to a point of we should, we should do this or maybe we should do that. And then we hold hands and we pray. Oh, my gosh, the miracle stuff that happens. You know, I, I was thinking, you know, I, I could, now that uh, long ride home, I've got enough seasons in the can to last me a couple of years. I thought, oh, maybe I'll open up and start being more open to speaking more now. We held hands and prayed. Boom. Invitations came in within a, within a few days. Just other little decisions like that, that when we pray together, things happen. So, so for when you're, when you're stepping out in faith as a family, whether or not it's in a ministry or anything else, men, value your bride. Grab her hand, stop and pray about every little thing and every big thing, and especially, you know, pray the rosary together. We're on the motorcycle the other day, riding up to Daytona, we pray the rosary, you know. So value your bride, men, and, and pray with her and see God move. God, God will do, God will answer the prayer of, of a couple that, that, that's in union and, and, and praying. But you were talking about, um, this again, in this intersection of faith and sports. What can we learn, what can a person learn uh, say as an athlete, what can they learn about their personal faith journey? How does that, how does that, what lessons do you learn in, in pursuing a, a sport, whether professionally or not, just to pursue a sport that you can apply to your spiritual life? Yeah, there's an awful lot. And I think that the idea is so big to some people that they kind of overthink it and they say, well, wait a minute, you're asking me to completely change what I do to incorporate my faith into what I'm already doing as a routine with sports. And the answer is no, you know, we don't have to get into this big, a long, big, long, elaborate prayer time with our heavenly father, because we're trying to incorporate our faith life into our sports life. There was a guest that I had on the show She's a pro softball player. Her name is Bailey Landry. And when she played at LSU collegiately, she said, before every at-bat, I would pray the Hail Mary to myself in the dugout. And it's just that simple. You know, I mentioned before about baby Joe Macy, the boxer, who would have the scapulars in his boots. And what I've started to hear more and more, Bear, is a lot of Bible studies that are being done. I thought it was pretty neat. There was a coach that I had on. He's the football coach at the Catholic University of America. And he was talking about organizing a Bible study for his players. And of course, this is always optional. You, you, know, you can't force it on, on your players, but the guys would start showing up. And so this kind of became something that I thought, well, that sounds like it makes sense. You organize a Bible study for your players. But there was someone that I had on very, very recently. And I thought, now see, that's different. When you say, why don't we just have a Bible study among fellow coaches here at the college where I work, because you don't know what these folks are going through. And they may say, I don't do that with my players. I don't have a Bible study with them. So number one, you have in common, we all work at the same place. Number two, we're all coaches. And number three, now we're bonding together in our faith life. So you are bringing that together. And it may be, I'm really struggling. I've got an athlete on my team who is in a slump, or I've got an athlete on my team who is hurt and is out for the season. And we're all carrying that weight together. So when you can pray together like that, you just said it, Bear, with your wife. There's so much power in prayer. And when you're praying as a team, I'm holding up air quotes, a, a prayer team. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to Baylor University. It's a Baptist university. That's where, uh, in Waco, Texas. That's where I uh, uh, found the Lord. Uh, but through the Catholic charismatic renewal, I kind of blew people's minds. when they, they All the Baptists were praying for me to really get to know the Lord. And they all went away for the summer 
when they came back, I was like so on fire. But wait a minute, you're still Catholic. But I guess I guess about uh, uh, 20 percent of the of the students there at Baylor are Catholic. But the thing about Baylor University is that it's a very Christian university. You, the coaches uh, don't have to can be right out and open hearted about their love for Jesus. And you see you see and hear the the players. And like I know Drew, uh, Coach Drew, the men's basketball team right now is ranked number one in the country. He says we are our 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 model this year is you yourself. See how does it go? Yourself, others, and <laughs> no, I can't remember. But it's basically yourself, others, and God. But I've got the acronym wrong. But there is that that thing about bringing sports, bringing your faith life into uh, your 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 quest for athletic excellence. But there's also something we can learn about the virtues by participating in a sport, growing in the virtues. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. We're talking with Bruce Warzniak. He's the host of Catholic Sports Radio a podcast. Uh, where, where can they find you? What website should they go to, Bruce? CatholicSportsRadio.net is the best place to start. All the episodes are there, and you can listen on the website, but you can find it almost anywhere that you listen to podcasts. There are links on CatholicSportsRadio.net to get the show on iTunes, which is Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all the usual players. That's so cool. It's so cool. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you guys to go to our website, deepadventure.com. Our web store is so cool. If you haven't been there lately, go check it out. We've got like 20 or 30 different t- types of really cool T-shirts. We've got my some of my books, the the. Deep in the Wave of Surfing Guide to the Soul, as well as Deep Adventure the Way of Heroic Virtue. We have Fulton Sheen's Warrior, a wartime prayer book. We have so many cool uh, books there. We have uh, St. Benedict Exorcism Rings, St. Michael the Archangel Rings. We got Warrior Rosaries. But we have this new thing we call um, the Catholic uh, the Catholic Ammo Kit, Spiritual Ammo Kit. And it's a, pla- it's a plastic ammo kit. And in there is one of my books. There's a, a St. Benedict single decade uh, exorcism uh, rosary decade. Uh, there's a, um, a Long Ride Home coffee mug, a cast member a Long Ride Home t-shirt, and other, other things. So check that out. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big savings by buying it, by buying it all for, uh, you know, all, when it all comes inside the ammo kit. So check out deepadventure.com. Go to our store. And we appreciate, we have great stuff there, but we also appreciate it because we need your support to help our ministry to, to keep, to keep uh, blasting out the good news. We're talking with Bruce Warzniak, the host of Catholic Sports Radio. Uh, Bruce, tell me about uh, the virtues. What it, wh- whether you're in an individual, individual sport or a team sport, what can you, how can you grow in virtue uh, through uh, sports and athletics? So much, so much. You know, our body is a temple, and so we have to glorify the, the body that God gave us. He created us in his image, and so to give it back to him, and a lot of people do it by way of competing in sports. And some, some of the guests that I've talked to are really doing amazing things in their faith. I actually talked to Father John Perdue. He is the director of vocations for the Diocese of Peterborough in Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. And so... He's doing the reverse. He is using sport to bring people into the faith in terms of the call to the priesthood, because we know that the Catholic Church is hurting for young men to give their life to Christ in that way. And so Father John there 
back in the 60s, there was something started up called the Flying Fathers, a hockey team of Catholic priests. Mm -hmm. And it sort of kind of started to fizzle out over the years. And, and he's, pardon the pun, he's resurrecting that. But what he's doing is showing that these are regular guys because they play hockey, but you can also use it to have young men say, well, wait a minute, if they're that kind of guy that they're just regular Joe walking down the street guy who plays hockey and they're priests, that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll consider it. And so, you know, I think there's a lot of things when you're talking about virtues, you know, we have a tendency to, you know, to, to put ourselves first all the time and to just look at what's in front of us. I, I love my spiritual director. He once said to me, and, and this goes back to something that you talked about at the beginning. He said, Bruce, life is not a problem to be solved. It's a mystery to be lived. Mm -hmm. And so we are always trying to solve every problem instead of saying, like you mentioned, the brick wall that's in front of us. You know, God's going to find a way to get you to the other side of that wall that you're going to think was never possible without him. And there was someone that I just had on my show recently, and some people may remember him. He There was a video that went viral from ESPN a few years ago. He was the Little League coach where his team lost at the Little League World Series and ESPN captured live his post-game speech on the field where he's talking to the kids and telling them how proud of them he was and how much he loved them. Well, Bear, as he and I went on with our interview, he talked about the fact that his wife was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer at the same time. So mm -hmm. he's on the field telling these little kids, you know, don't be upset that you just lost. And I asked him, I said, how did you not look at those kids and say, Look, it's just a baseball game. My wife is dying, okay? I'm mm -hmm. losing her, and you kids are here on the verge of tears over baseball? And he said, Bruce, that, that would be selfish. He said, because in that moment, that's not, that's not what God wants me to do. He doesn't, he doesn't want me to make it about myself. It's about those kids, and it's about unity, and it's about love, and it's about family. He said, so that was not rehearsed. He said, that's one of the questions that I get the most often is, was that speech scripted out? He said, I just said what was in my heart at the moment. And so I think that's one way that we can use sports to blend our faith is just to be a living example to others and show people. Because in that moment, he didn't say, guys, I'm your coach, but I'm also a Catholic Christian. He just acted as a Catholic Christian would and showed them mercy, showed them love, showed them compassion. And he didn't say, this is about me and what I'm going through with my wife. And I thought that was beautiful testimony and, and a beautiful way to, as they say, preach the gospel and use words if necessary. We're, we're talking with Bruce Wozniak, uh, Catholic Sports Radio host. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, I, you know, Bruce, in, in, in my life, I've, I, I'm, every year I set a physical goal for myself. I remember pedaling my bicycle across the United States or setting a goal to test for my black belt or uh, paddling the Molokai Channel, uh, the 27 miles of the very treacherous channel between Molokai and Oahu, um, because I wanted to grow in the virtue of fortitude. And there's one gift, that one fruit, that one virtue that sports people tend to grow in. It's the virtue of, uh, of fortitude. When you're involved in sports, you can actually learn, you know, it's a martial arts uh, truth that you learn, you, you change from the outside in quite often. My bicycling across the United States, uh, that that ability to say to tell myself I could do one more pedal stroke or training for my black belt running in the mountains. It was a ninja ninja black belt, so we're training and fighting in the mountains through the night. Um, being able to to uh, do one more push up. My my sensei used to say you can do one more of anything. The whole uh, element of fortitude. The moment you are walking into the desert, you're on your way out. You you can do one more of anything there's there's some there's people out there right now that are struggling they don't think they can even lift their hand one more time but by god's grace you can do one more of anything but uh, men and women out there you can train yourself the our, my motto when i got my first degree black belt was he trains my hands for war by thee i can crush a troop by thee i can leap a wall by thee i can bend a bow of bronze you, you, we, we need to be physically uh, fit. I call it fitness to witness. We can learn a lot about the spiritual life from the outside in. Uh, the, 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 the asceticism of today is I'm going to be on a ketogenic regimen. 
That's good. What, that's what how I'm going to eat. Uh, the asceticism today is to say I'm going to spend 60 minutes every day to exercising, whether it's cardio or flexibility training or strength training or surfing or, or walking. Um, that that training uh, that 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 ability to to grow in the strength of our will, to grow in the spur- virtue of fortitude, is something that can shape our inner soul by doing that one more thing, that one more push up so that the and then the other thing is in the context context of sports um i mean one of my favorite things to do would be to uh, you played basketball is to be the one with the number one assists you know that behind the the behind the back pass or the no look pass or getting that to the guy that you know is in the open is it's not all about you it's about you know succeeding as a team that's why people out there that right now are struggling they say i can't do one more of anything because i'm i'm feeling defeated you may also want to look and see: Are you a part of a team? Uh, there's no lone rangers in Christianity. Do you go to Do you go to church? Are you part of a men's group? Are you Are you uh, Do you go to Eucharistic adoration? We, we You know, you, we are meant to be the part of the body of Christ. We're not meant to live this Christian walk alone. So, team sports uh, can teach you so much about it. Not just teach you, but change you from the outside in by participating in the right way you know, athletically, we're going to be bringing it. We got another couple of minutes. What, what's on your heart, Bruce, you want to want to help us close out with? Well, you know, I wanted to say to, to carry on what you were just saying there. So many of the coaches that I interview on Catholic sports radio, they will talk about what great young men they go see the players go on to become. They don't talk to me about, I helped one guy rush for a thousand yards. I helped one guy score 50 goals or, you know, the individual honors that their players achieved, it's about the mark that they're making on their life. And I would encourage anyone in your audience who is a coach to make sure that you have that Christian view, that you're blessed with that opportunity. Yes, sure, you are in a position where they are looking to you to better their skills, but you can also teach them life skills. And some people are really being called to something that they're not aware of, something that they probably think is not possible. I had someone on my show, her name was Sister Rita Clariochis, She played professional football for four years, and before that, she had been a college basketball player. She had gotten a scholarship, and lo and behold, now she's a Catholic nun. Mm. So, you know, open your mind and let the Lord do the work in you. Let the Holy Spirit move in you the way that he's calling you to, just like Bear and I are using the gift of gab to glorify him and to do our shows and to bring, hopefully, audience members closer to him because... You really have to avail yourself and look for him in the way I mentioned earlier with my guest list growing the way that it did exponentially, that God may be calling you to something that you're not aware of, but you have to always be open to him and always be listening. We're talking to Bruce Wozniak, the uh, host of Catholic Sports Radio. You know, the pursuit of excellence. I know when I got my first black belt and I saw my other friends grow into their black belts, you know, in the, the, the ninja black belt thing is not an easy black belt to get. I saw them changing, and I saw people who were excellent in that were, seemed to become excellent in other areas of their lives. They took more pride in just the way they parked their car. You know, mm-hmm. they, maybe they're making their bed in the morning. They're getting up on time. Uh, that, that pursuit of excellence then translates into every area of life and into the area of our, our, our spiritual life, too. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We invite you to go to deepadventure.com to find out more about us, and you can go to catholicsportsradio.net to find out more about our guest, Bruce Wozniak. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.